Hey guys, it's Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be looking at some more ice table practice problems. This is part three in the series where I go over all the different ways that ice table problems can be asked, so you, you'll be prepared for any question that appear on the exam. In this question, we're given a balanced reaction. We're also given a K value, and then we're given the initial amount of N2O4 and are asked to solve for the equilibrium amount of both of them. Once again, we're going to, I'm just going to start by rewriting the reactions. And you always want to check that the reactions are balanced. There's, this is pre-balanced because there's already a 2 here. Then we'll set up an ice table. Since we are asked to solve for the concentration at equilibrium, I should just do the ice table in terms of concentration. Once again, concentration is, mol is molarity. Molarity is moles over liters. So it tells us that the in initially there were one mole of N2O4 and in a 10, 10 liter vessel. So I can convert that into concentration. Concentration N2O4 initially will be 1.0 moles divided by 10.0 liters, which will give us point, point 0.10 molar. So plug that into here, 0 0.10 molar, and doesn't tell us anything about N2O4, so we can just assume there was there were none of it initially. This means that the reaction will proceed to the right, and so then this will be minus x, and this will be plus 2x because of the, the coefficient 2. The E line is just the sum of the I and C line, 0 0.10 minus x, and 2x. Then we can set up the K expression, so Kc will equal the concentration of NO2 squared divided by the concentration of N2O4. Substitute the K value in and substitute the, the equilibrium variables. K is 4.0 times 10 to negative 7 equals the concentration of NO2 was 2x, so 2x squared, because they're squared here, divided by the concentration of N2O4, which is 0 0.10 minus x. Here our k value is it's really small. If the k value is small, typically the cutoff is around negative 4, negative 5, or smaller, then you can assume that this reaction barely happened. So the x value is going to be so small in comparison to the number next to it that we can just get rid of this and that'll simplify our calculation. So now, now it'll just be as such. So let's, let's simplify this a little bit more. This will be 4x squared divided by 0 0.10. So to solve for x, we can multiply both sides by 0 0.1. Then divide both sides by 4, and then take the square root of both sides. And then that will give us x value of 0 0.0001. So once we have our x, we can just plug it back in. So that means the equilibrium concentration of N2O4 will be 0.1 minus that. So pretty much it's, it's going to stay as, uh, it'll change a little bit, but it's pretty much almost 0.1. And then this will be 2x, so 2 times that will give us a value of 0 0.00020 uh, molar because of sig figs. We have two sig figs here, two sig figs here, so we report all our answers in two sig figs. Next question. So in this question, we're given a balanced chemical reaction. We're given the Kp, and then it's saying that we started with some solid. The reaction is allowed to reach equilibrium, and then we have to calculate the total pressure at equilibrium. Start by rewriting the reaction. Since we're given the Kp and we want to figure out the total pressure, let's just do an ice table in terms of pressure. We started with some amount of the reactant. The reactant is a, is a solid, so we just get, whenever you have solids or liquids in the, in the ice table, just get rid of that column. And then there's no mention of any, any product, so we'll start with 0 ATM and 0 ATM for both the gases. 
this means that the reaction will be proceeding to the right, so this will be plus 2x, and then this will be plus x. The E line will just be 2x and x. Then we can set the Kp expression. So Kp equals the pressure of NH3 squared times the pressure of CO2. There's nothing on the bottom because the reactant is a solid, and solid liquids do not go into the equilibrium expression. Now I'll substitute the values in to Kp is 2.9 times 10 to negative 3. NH3 is 2x, and then CO2 is x. Right, NH3 is 2x, but because there's a 2 here, we would have to square it, and then CO2 is this x. So then this simplifies to 4x squared times x, which is 4x cubed. Then to solve for x, we can first divide both sides by 4 and then take the cube root of both sides and then they'll give us the x value of 0 0.089 how many sig figs? We should have two sig figs so 0 0.090 atms. Then we can plug x back into the e-line that means that the pressure of NH3 at equilibrium is going to be two times x which will be 0 0.18 atm and then the pressure of CO2 will just be x so 0 0.090 atm. The total pressure is the the sum, it's just the sum of the partial pressure of all the gases so we just add these together and then we'll get the total pressure and that will be 0 0.27 atm. In this video, we took a look at other ways that ice table questions could be asked and some other concepts. One of the, con the new concepts that we talked about in the series is that k, if, if k is small, then you can assume that the plus x's or the, x, the minus x's are negligible, so that'll make your calculation easier. And then we also took a look at a problem where we were, we ha we were given the kp and we did an ice table in terms of pressure and then we're asked to solve for the total pressure in the container. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.